All right, so we have this rubber drive wheel we got from the uh, local hardware store. It's a uh, three inch caster wheel. We're just gonna take the uh, wheel itself off. We're gonna use this part as the friction drive wheel for the electric bike assembly. What we need to do is put this coupler in, which as you can tell won't fit right now. So we're gonna drill out that hole a little bit with the drill and uh, make it just almost the size of this and then we're gonna press this into the uh, hole that way it won't spin freely while it's in there and it's nice and set and a little bigger so the bolt will fit through there or the coupler can fit in there now we're gonna press it on using a piece of metal you can use any piece of metal put a hole in it your coupler a bolt. Ideally you want this threaded all the way down that way you can just work this all the way in. I'm going to be stacking a couple of nuts on top of it to uh, get it to go to the maximum depth, uh, depth and get it all the way into there. And you just put it bolt through the plate into there. Screw that on. And you can grab this side with a wrench if you need to. That'll work for a while until it starts disappearing into the plastic. And as I tighten this up, you notice it's pulling itself into the uh, wheel there. And it's going to leave a nice press, pressed coupler in there so we can hook it right up to the electric uh, drive. See how that's pressed in there? You just keep on going until this bolt bottoms out. I think well, that's it right there. I'm going to put a nut on the end of this and finish the rest of the way down. Now that we have our uh, coupling pushed all the way into the uh, wheel right there, we can start mounting this to the electric motor. I have a 24 volt, um, 250 watt electric motor. It's a DC motor. It came off of an old Razor scooter or something like that. Uh, these are great to use. They have the right, you know, the shaft size matches directly to the uh, coupler. Uh, you just got to make sure when you're hunting extra parts like this down, some of these come in a reverse thread and some of them come in a standard thread. You want to get the ones with the standard thread because you're never going to find the reverse thread bolts or parts for it and you lose one bolt, you're kind of out. So, we're just going to take this and screw it onto the end of the motor there. And then grab the uh, shaft pliers and do a couple of twists here. Tighten it really good, you know, that way that it doesn't try to slip off you on you when you're riding. Now I also measured how far I can run this bolt in on this side, all the way down to the uh, end there. And that's going to be where the bolt meets up with the other bolt on the other side of this coupler. That was a little bit longer than the bolt that I had, so I just added another nut on the end there. Put a washer, another washer there. And tighten this down. Got a couple of turns. That'll tighten the wheel up too. And we have our wheel installed on the motor. We'll get started on doing the mounting bracket for the motor. We'll start doing, we're gonna kind of lathe this down a little bit just because the wheel, since it's cast rubber, it's not gonna be perfectly round. It's not gonna be, you know, completely to the dimension you're going to need it. So what we're going to do is we're going to try running this motor and we'll tack it down to the counter here. And I'll use a sharp flathead screwdriver and just kind of run it over the end like we're doing uh, well, we are going to be doing a lathing. But, uh, and that'll be kind of a cheap way to get that nice and round. That way it's not jumping around when you're trying to ride on your bike. You know, the more this wobbles around and is off weight, 
it's going to destroy the bearings inside the motor here. So you want to kind of get this, you know, to the best of your abilities as round as you can, as per center being where you have it hooked up.